Hello everyone, my name is Melody Hosseini, founder and CEO of Inspiring Age International. Inspiring Age recently launched a Inspiring Age Ambassador program. We're searching for 15 young ambassadors to join the Inspiring Age team to contribute their skills to an organization that's really growing uh, across the world, but also for us to give them an opportunity to understand what a social enterprise is all about, get involved in some of the running of the organization, get some training, get involved in lots of things such as it might be graphic design and IT, it might be marketing, it might be training, and delivering our skills boot camp so lots and lots of different things for them to get involved in and we received over 200 applications from young people from all over the country and actually even Jamaica Kingston and Portugal as well so I don't quite know how that happened but we were we were delighted to receive so many applications from young people who wanted to get involved in inspiring age so that was really fantastic and I have to say I was absolutely blown away reading the 200 applications for the level of volunteer volunteering that young people have done. It was really fantastic to see and I think that young people have shown time and time again that they're the group of society that volunteer the most actually. And what it also showed me after reading 200 applications was that um, there's a lot of kind of um, different techniques in applying for a position, you know, so at the moment with uh, youth unemployment quite high I imagine that, you know, a lot of young people are applying for jobs for different volunteer opportunities And you know, whilst I was reading the applications, I made lots of notes for tips for young people um, You know um, on how to support you to write an application form how to answer questions What if they're asking for something and you don't have that experience? What do you do? So I I just thought I'd just share those with you um, in case that's useful for next time you apply for positions. So <coughs> sorry if, the, if it's a, kind of the list is a bit random, I haven't had a chance to kind of put it all together, I just kind of was writing it as I was going along and reading the applications. Um, so first of all, um, when you when they ask for an application form, so you, they've asked for all the information in the applica application form and they've asked you to send an email to post the application form, the best thing to do is write something within the body of the email. There were lots and lots of uh, young people who applied to be an ambassador who wrote fantastic application forms. When they sent the email in, the email was just empty. I mean, there was absolutely nothing in there. It's always best to write something in the email, even if it's just, you know, hello, um, you know, please find my application form attached. Um, you know, um, I hope you like it or get in touch if you require more information or anything like that and there were lots of uh, people who did that so that was good so make sure you do write something in the body of the email if you're cutting and pasting from another application form usually you can tell um, make sure first of all don't cut and paste because each application form it shouldn't be generic so if if you know I'm reading it and I'm seeing, um, you know, I can, I can tell where it's generic information or information that's been specifically written with the Inspiring Age Ambassador program in mind. So, and usually people can tell. So try and not write something that's generic. We'll come on to that. But if you do have to, some things, you know, you might cut and paste, you know, because you have to do that, that's fine. But make sure that it's all the same font, the same colour, the same format, because it's quite embarrassing when you see a chunk of writing and it's quite clearly been um, cut and paste. So just make sure, you you know, that it's all the same, consistent. So the second thing is, if they ask for a specific skill, it's because they're looking for that specific skill. They'll have a list where, you know, a tick list, has this person got X, Y, Z skills? Try not to waffle on and, and kind of go off course about lots of different things that doesn't relate to what they're asking for because it kind of, your information then that is valuable will get lost in the, in the kind of waffles. So just think about that. Be specific to what people are asking. If they're asking for information and you don't have it, so if they're asking for, for example, you know, we asked for a volunteering experience within um, the Inspiring Age application form. If you don't have it, just be kind of honest and say, I don't have that experience. Because I think that if you try and mask it as you've done something that actually isn't um, what they're looking for, then it just kind of, it just, you lose a little bit of credibility and it just puts a question mark on some of the other information that you may have offered. So the best thing to do is just be honest about it. <coughs> but 
Um, one of the really good uh, examples was a, was a young man who applied and he was honest and he said, look, I don't have volunteering experience, but um, I actually have a snippet of, he says, this is what he said. So he says, no, I haven't. This is because of the lack of time that I've had due to other things such as my studies. Um, but this is definitely something that I want to do, especially on areas that I'm good at, such as, and then he goes on to list the areas that he'd like to volunteer on. I also reckon that being a part of the Young Ambassador Programme will make me well trained and um, uh, intellectual volunteer than anywhere else so I think that that's a really good example you know he said he said no I haven't done volunteering but this is why I'm applying and these are the areas that I could volunteer in so I think that, that was really good and honest the other thing to note as well is that don't be too quick to say you don't have something think about it so the reason I say that is because there were lots of young people who said I don't have any volunteering experience and then when we asked further about things that they'd done, they actually explained that they had done volunteering, but to them that wasn't what they would consider volunteering. So it said about, uh, you know, great initiatives they run in school, extracurricular activity, that's all volunteering. You know, you're not getting paid for it and you're doing something for a good cause. That is volunteering. So, you know, think, have a real thing before you say, no, I haven't done it. Have a real think and see if you really have done it. So, so that's the first thing. Try and use some personal stories. Now this links to about not being generic. As human beings, being able to tell a story is an extremely powerful uh, you know, technique. And that's something that when we actually train people on uh, the Inspiring Edge Skills Boot Camps in the communication skills module, storytelling is, is a kind of really important feature. Now extend that to the application form. So if you can say something that's very personal, you know, an experience that you've had that links to the role, or perhaps explaining a passion that you hold why you're passionate about it then that's definitely that's something that will stand out and when the employer is thinking why you then you know they'll remember personal stories you know that, because it's personal you know so it can't be anyone else that's so personal to you so that's definitely a very powerful technique and it links to the point where I was saying earlier about not really writing something that's generic and believe me after I've read 200 applications um, generic things stand out like you know like a red light you know so things like I mean I tweeted um while I was reading saying that uh, I'm only on the 60th application and already you know you do get a little bit tired of the terms I'm a team player time management skills and I'm just not sure that those things mean very much without it actually sitting alongside you doing it you know so working well with people and gelling and you know actually bringing out the best in people and you know knowing your team that's all kind of notions that you can't really kind of, exp you can't say oh, I'm a good team player and bam, you know, you're, it's like that. So, and they are very generic things. So I, I think that, you know, now when there's a post and, you know, over 200, 300, 600 people apply for the same position, um, you know, how do you stand out? And it's, and it isn't through kind of just listing very kind of generic things like I'm a good team player. So just try and think about things, you know, experiences and, and passions and things that you hold that are personal to you and write it in a way that is kind of in, in a way that stands out. So one way that you can do that and where the question asks for kind of a list of different areas, one of the things that you could do to break it up would be to do bullet, bullet points. Like you can do bullet points with an ap application. There's no way why you have to block write it. Just bullet point it and it breaks it up. It makes sure that, you know, after getting tired of reading lots and lots of applications, they usually say quite similar things. It's quite good to kind of break it up like that. One of the other things is, and this is if you're a young person, like it's okay if you don't have like an official email address, you know, um, don't worry about that. That's fine. But just make sure that your email address is appropriate. So for example, you know, when we were um, reading the application form, what we did was one of our volunteers listed all of the names, locations, age, um, you know, information like that onto a database. And one of the lines was um, email addresses. So when I was kind of going across and reading, you know, what we had on our day space, I was looking at their name, age, location, their skill area, and then their email address, and then I would email them or, or whatever. And, um, you know, some people have email addresses from when they were younger, and it might have been 
like silly things like we had uh, an email address that was you know you're a joker and it's just kind of like just just think about it. it I mean it will take you five minutes to register for a new email address at gmail or something so just just you know try and have your name uh, you know something a little bit professional so it's not kind of uh, inappropriate or something that would kind of you know again put a question mark over your credibility and professionality because at the end of the day you are going to represent that organization one of the other things really to think about and this doesn't apply to many people it's just something to be conscious of is that you know when you're when you're an employer and you're kind of thinking about who's bring on board to work with you you will kind of you are looking for something that's going to be beneficial to the organization because we're looking for assets to what we're doing that will strengthen what we're doing so you know when it asks you why you it is good to list um, why you want something like what you can what you think you can gain from it from the experience so it's okay to say you know like I want to develop my skills that's absolutely fine particularly in a volunteer position because that's why you're there you know um, so that's okay but also don't forget to include what you think you can give to that organization as well because it's a two-way thing so you know yes you can gain something from it but don't forget to cover what you can give to that organization as well um, make sure you spell the company's name right so I think that you know researching who it is that you're going to be working for is very very important so you know so that so that they can kind of see that it's not generic again you know that it's something you've really considered that you really want so really make sure you spell the company's name right that you're applying to uh, and that you get all your information uh, in order so that's probably really important you should do that first really just to make sure that if it is something you even want to apply for you know so just make sure you do that um <coughs> excuse me I keep I keep coughing it's all the talking that I do um and then also I think the other thing is as well and this is I would say very very important is that don't be embarrassed to show passion um I think, you know, it's particularly for a social enterprise, you know, particularly if it's a volunteer position. I think, you know, it's not embarrassing to show that you want something. It's not embarrassing to say that, you know, I really do want this. Like, I've really looked into it. It's something I'm very passionate about. You know, do that. You know, show your passion for something. Show that you want it. Because, again, it will make you stand out. And it also will make the employer think, you know, this is someone who will kind of represent us well. And this is someone who does really want to be here and will put in the effort so just show passion um the other really little thing is um okay spelling isn't everything by all means no one's going to say I'm not going to choose this person because I spelt a word wrong or something we all do it that's okay but use a spell checker just just make sure that you know it's as it's as kind of representative and reflective of you as it can be um I was reading one of the applications and this guy was absolutely brilliant. So when I read the first few questions, it's like, oh, you know, I'm definitely going to put him on the shortlist. Really, really good. Very impressive. And then I got to the last two questions and he 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 hadn't answered the last two questions. Um, and I don't know why that is. I don't know whether perhaps by mistake he hadn't scrolled down or, or you know, whatever it is make sure you answer all the questions because um, they will all, they're all there for a reason and, and we're all looking for different things through each question. So if you've missed a couple of questions, then you're sort of going to um, miss out on gaining, um, you know, points really for the, the areas that we're looking for. So just make sure you're kind of checking the whole thing, make sure you've answered everything, you know, that you, you have covered everything that they're looking for. Yeah, I think that's it really. Just a few things to think about. And, you know, and if you are, I mean, I get a lot of emails from people asking, you know, I've been applying for a lot of jobs. I'm just not having much luck. What can I do? I'm so sorry if you're going through a really hard time of applying for jobs at the moment. There are so many people who are in a similar situation, but don't give up. Like, look at opportunities where you can ex increase your experience and your offer, you know, such as volunteering, getting involved with different things, you know, say yes to things and go along and, you know, especially if it's in your field, get involved with things and just keep applying and look at kind of the CV um, and your application form. Make sure that it's personal, take on 
board some of the things that we've talked about and there's lots of resources online as well that you can utilize and just you know show your passion and don't be generic you know think about what you're saying and who you are and try and put that forward and that would kind of be my best tips really and as for the inspiring age young ambassadors we've done the shortlist we've interviewed them and we'll be announcing who the 15 young ambassadors are so stay tuned thank you very much and good luck